Hi, welcome to North Star Course. This video will introduce you to the weekend software. So basically, the purpose to use the weekend software is to control the video processor and the only one controllers. Uh, in, th in this video, we'll be using J6 as an example. So if you use different devices, um, there may be some small differences, but general settings are the same. And now we're using the USB cable to connect the J6 and the PC. You can also use the Ethernet cables. So in the device list, uh, you can see uh, there is some a green status light. So if the if you can see the green light, that means J6 is is connected. So input and output settings are general for uh, all of all of. Uh, processors and the only one controllers. So if we click output, uh, input, and you can see you can change the uh, the resolution and the the frame rate and the color of some input sources, just like this. And you can also custom the resolution. You can also adjust the color. And as we know, J6 has four DVI outputs, and now we're using the splicer mode. So, uh, in the mosaic layout, you can see uh, eight types of layouts are supported. There are there are one by one, uh, one by two, two by two, uh, three by one. So you need to choose one according to your actual screen resolution. For example, we'll be using two by two here. So in the output settings, you can, you can adjust the resolution of the DVI outputs. And now you can see this in the screen settings, it's already 2x2. Two two. You can also adjust the color. Here, you can also see the transition effect, and you can also change the duration. In sync mode, you'll be able to set all input sources to synchronize with one input source. So in source, you can see all input sources that J6 has. By dragging input sources to the editing area, you can apply multiple layers. In the editing area, you can left click to choose the layer and change its resolution, the position, and the color on the right. You can also change the size and the position like this, just by moving the cursor. If you move the cursor on the layer, you can see some but buttons, including locking the layer, making the layer scale to the full screen, and make it scale to fill mosaic area. You can also set it to, to be pixel to pixel. If you right click layer, you can do some operations, including switch the input source. Changing the priority. Locking the layer. 
close the layer, or close all layers. You can also do these operations by clicking the, the button's top. Here, you will lock all layers. Here, you can clear the editing area. These two buttons are for redo and undo. These three buttons are for zoom in, zoom out, and auto fit. You can use this button, one click restore, to restore all layers to, to its default size and resolution. You can use this, this button to, ref, to freeze the screen. And use this button to make the screen black out. And now we're using the spicer mode of the J6. You can click this button to switch mode between spicer and switcher. In the switcher mode, all layer settings will go to the preview channel at first. You can click Take or Cut to apply the settings to the program channel. The difference between Take or Cut is that Take means there will be transition effect when you send a preview to the program, while Cut doesn't have any transition effects. And also, if you enable the swap here, the preview and program will swap. On the top, you can see the preset button. One preset will include all layer settings, except for the input and the output settings. You can left-click a preset to load, and use the right-click to save. On the top, you can see the OSD setting. Here, you can add the background using the picture in your computer, or a screenshot taken from, from the input source, or the screen. Right-click the area below. You can crop the image like this. You can also save another background to the J6, but only one background can be applied at once. Apart from these, you can also choose a single color as a background.
In the System section, click Connect. Then the system will search for and connect the devices automatically. Click Sync to keep WeCan in sync with the configuration information of the video processor or all-in-one controller. You can upgrade the firmware by clicking here. In the device list, it shows the information of all devices. You can click Browse to choose the update file. Then choose Update. You can send some test patterns using the self-test button. Reset function allows you to clear the configuration information of the current device with one click. In network settings, you can change the IP of the device for the Ethernet connection. Click here and you can change the software language. And here's a device list showing all devices that we can support. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Okay, so that's all for the basic operations of the WeCan software. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.